Hey, what's up, guys? Let's do a quick mill day here. Uh, some actually some some higher end stuff in this mill. Oh, higher end for by my standards. Um, with the way prices have been going, I actually unloaded a few PC items that I've had and for ridiculous amounts compared to what I pay for them. So I was able to uh, kind of convert that into some new some new things, new PC items. Uh, I think we do that from time to time, at least I know I do for sure, and just kind of changing things up. So as I say that, we'll start with a very low end card here. This is uh, this is a pretty cool though. I, I might try to get it graded. It looks okay. There's some surface issue, but um, this is up from Upper Deck Retro, groovy kind of glove. <laughs> Uh, I think it was like two dollars or something like that, even in today's card market. Uh, pretty cool. I d I don't know, you know, the parameters on this. If it was a tough pour or not, I I doubt that it was, but uh, pretty cool little. Uh, I don't know, 70s vibe, 60s vibe, I guess from it. But uh, here's a card that's gone up in value. I used to buy these all day long for literally a couple bucks. And this is uh, Sweet Strokes from Tops. I think it's 90, it? 96. Uh, pretty cool little foil insert. Uh, not a tough insert at all either. But um, these have shot up to like 15, 20 bucks or something like that. I still got this one for cheap. It was like eight bucks. But uh, one thing I noticed with this set is um, the centering. This is not designed to be like this. Actually, I've seen some tens that are perfectly centered uh, from left to right so this one is is badly off centered um, top to bottom is is perfect this is what you want the top is a little bit skinnier design by design is, than the bottom but left to right is definitely uh, you're looking for 50 50 on that um, so this card looked really good I, I thought about sending it in until I noticed that the the centering was bad it's bad enough to where I, I think it would be an automatic eight. The rest of the card looks great, um, but move on. This is a pretty cool. Another cheap, low end Griffey from Metal, from Skybox. Uh, it is actually a, a metal card. I imagined it would grade pretty easily with these round, round corners, and tough, you know, a piece of aluminum or something. So. The surface is is pretty good on this one, so I'd, this may be a card I'd send in in the future, just because of the fact it would probably grade pretty high, and it's pretty cool. I like these metal cards. Um, it looks like it's painted on a piece of aluminum, actually. But um, okay, so here's some uh, 98 top stars, which I talk about every video. But um, these are the gold to 22.99. And this one uh, came in, it looked really good for generally how they come in, but not good enough for me to uh, try to grade it. Uh, I'd be looking for, I'm really looking to get it, this card slabbed in a mint slab, so for the PC. I have so many of them, but not a single one of them in graded mint. In the gold parallel anyways, this one did look really good. Uh, I do have a, a gold parallel out in a bulk version right now, or a bulk order that I sent out in January that I'm hoping comes back in 9. If it doesn't come back in 9, this one will probably sh be shot out to PSA. Um, yeah, it just looks really good. The corners, very minimal white. I have yet to see one without any. And the chipping on the edges is not too bad either. So that leads me into the next um, card. This is kind of like a holy grail for me. To be honest, this is actually the Rainbow Foil from 90, 98 Top Stars, and they're numbered to 99. And what's special about this one is this is actually serial number one. So I don't know. I don't put too much stock on it. I think it definitely went higher because of the fact that it was number one. And there was definitely somebody else interested other than me because they put up a $283 bid and still lost the auction. But I was just not going to lose this card. Uh, I haven't ever owned the the Rainbow Foils. They just never come up. Hardly, hardly ever. And when they do, they're in terrible shape. This one looked really good. 
but when it came in upon further inspection, there there's something going on with the centering. I don't know if the cameras can pick it up, but there's a or the surface. There's a cutout of where his body is supposed to be. That there's like some raised texturing going on on the surface of this card, and you can see where it's actually not lined up with where his body is and then his face and just basically throughout the whole card. I don't know if that's an issue that they have with the entire run of these. There's only 99 of them, but um, I don't know how they would grade that. I, I think that it would affect the grade greatly. There's only one of these Rainbow Foil Griffies graded in the PSA uh, registry, and it got a 6. So I don't know. Like I said, maybe the, this the whole run of these Rainbow Foil Griffies just kind of got... It's just off. It's not off center, but the the surface texturing is definitely off uh, where it's supposed to be. Like if if we go back to this gold, um, it's it's perfectly cut out around his body, so you can't really tell on the camera. But that uh, kind of sucks. That's not something you can see, obviously, during an auction, but on eBay. But that's okay. It's still cool. Maybe I'll try to send it in and see what it gets. If not, I'll just keep it in a one touch. This is a really special card for me in terms of my personal collection. Um, and really rare. And like I said, it was really expensive. <laughs> but um, we'll go from that to this. Uh, this is from the Studio Platinum. I have a gold out in the bulk order right now. Uh, these grade really easy with the round corners, tough cards, it's like a plastic card stock. It looks like a credit card. Uh, there, I have noticed some minor surface issues in these, some of the ones I buy raw, so something to keep an eye out. Um, don't just think you're gonna send these in and get a 10. You still gotta at least uh, look, your, look your cards over. If there's no you know, severe issues going on, you're probably gonna get a 10 on this a set like this. Uh, definitely, certainly a nine. <clears throat> So this is actually this is actually a ridiculously rare card. Um, this is Dial One from Skybox Thunder. It is, uh, I think it's 99. But um, I think you got like one of these per almost nine boxes. So over eight boxes, um, you get one of these, and there are ten cards in the set. So. Out of your nine boxes or eight, whatever, if you got lucky, uh, you, you then have a 10% chance for your dial one to be a Griffey. So it's ridiculously rare, and they hardly ever come up, but they still sell for like 20 bucks. <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe it's the old school cell phone. It kinda, it's kind of gimmicky, but this—I mean, this was real in 1999. <laughs> so it's—I think it's awesome. It's kind of got like an acetate screen going on there. Um, just prototypical 1999, so awesome card. I'm a huge fan of it. I scoop them when they come up because, like I said, for how rare and how tough of a pull these were, they just get no love in the hobby. That's okay. I'll continue to take them for 20 bucks. But um, this is awesome. This is a buyback card from um, Upper Deck. Um, just look at that big bold auto on that. I love the inscription. That's the whole reason I bought it was the 97 AL MVP inscription there. Uh, it was cheap. I mean, in terms of Griffey autos, it was like a hundred bucks. Um, you know, I know when he paid when he did his private signings with TriStar or whatever a little bit. You know, to get a, an inscription added, it was like an additional 150 bucks. And I may be off on that. Maybe it's 200. Maybe it was 100. But I don't know. I think it's pretty cool. And just the autograph was just big and bold. You don't see. You know, when he gets free reign to to really let go on his signature, it's a pretty big, bold signature. Uh, hand numbered to 37 there. That's pretty cool. But um, awesome card. Um, it may be worth grading. There, This red corner here, um, it's showing a little bit of white, but I didn't buy it to, to necessarily grade a card like that. Um, so here's a, here's another cool um, from a tough, tough insert. I guess it's, I think they're about one one per three boxes I think you got these flare zones out of 96 flare but um, it's a pretty yeah 12 cards in the set so not the not the it's a pretty tough pull so awesome looking uh, already graded in a 10 I, I don't know I don't have I've never really bought these raw to, to see 
what kind of shape they come in, but I would have to imagine it's a pretty tough set. There's not that many in the PSA registry. But uh, just awesome looking. These FLIR zones, they, they carry quite a bit of hobby actually, raw. This 96, 97, 98. They're just nice looking cards and they sell raw generally around 40 bucks, I, I think. I don't know. That was pre-explosion. But um, so here we got a one of one actually. Um, this of course has the the laundry tag in it and a little little sliver, a little stitch there. So a dual patch one of one from Immaculate. Uh, just awesome. I love patch cards. Patch cards are kind of my kind of my thing. But um, yeah, this was really cool. Um, I was able to work out a deal with the guy. He had a lot of high end Griffies that he just put on the market and um pretty cool so that's from the diamond collections tag and let me see maybe i can put a a picture up of uh what it may look like on the jersey i like to always see what they look like on the actual jersey but uh okay so here's a uh, we'll save that one for last so we're going to we got a little pool halls patch here uh, I love these. I don't know what's up. Pool Hall's hobby just, I mean, you can scoop these up for so cheap, next to nothing. And uh, this is numbered to 99, but th this is actually the, uh, like the comb on the Cardinal on the, from his uniform, the jersey there. Like the, the, uh, the head. And um, still pretty cool. Uh, these old school Fleur patch cards, they, they really did put some neat patches in these cards. That's not like what you see nowadays. I don't know. Tops. It, I don't know if it's because they're spending too much money on the license, but their their patch cards are are just so lame and weak, in my opinion. I mean, I have some one of ones from Tops Griffey one of ones. I'll be showing them in a um a, a showcase here that you'd think would carry a much more substantial patch, and they're just kind of lame pinch strike patches or whatnot. And, Panini, that's one thing. I don't know if they're because they, they're not paying for a license, they can afford to put in um, better quality uh, patches. And here's a perfect example of better quality patches. This is from Leaf Fantastic Fabrics, and uh, this was the most expensive card I've ever bought actually for my PC. So this was 400 bucks, and for a card number to 15, I mean the patches on it are just insane. I mean we got the the uh, Russell Athletic patch there we got the the logo man cut into two the authentic part of the authentic collection we got reds patches in there we got the uh little mariners green patch there i mean it, it's just got oh this is like an awesome awesome card you don't get to see the blanked out jersey the unis or anything it's got the batting helmet on it it doesn't stand out to you as an unlicensed product but um so i i found out doing some checking out the the patches that these came from and they actually all came from the same patch minus the red reds patch and who knows maybe even this green patch came with the laundry tag patch but these are all from the same patch and hopefully I can get a, a little picture up um, here that that kind of shows what's going on with it there but um, I've never bought I've, I don't submit to Beckett or anything like that but um, I'm not going to cut this out. I probably will just send it to Becca and get it in a 9.5 holder. Looking at the card, it looks pretty good. I, I would have to assume it probably got nine corners. It's a thick card. And the corners, I don't know, by, by PSA standards, they're not white or frayed, but they're just kind of angled down, sloped down a little bit, I think, from being put in this, um, this card saver. So we'll see. Um, I'm not that worried about it. I, I think it would be okay in the Beckett 9.5 slab um, just looking at it I know if, if I were to cut it out and send it to PSA it would probably come back on uh, a nine best case scenario but but this awesome patches like I said I'm a patch guy um, one of these I'm um, hopefully soon uh, when the bulk order comes back I have some some cool Griffies in there that I'd like to include in a in a Griffey PC showcase or something like that but uh, that's definitely coming. Hopefully, whenever this bulk order comes back, uh, we can get filming on that. I think it would be pretty cool and pretty fun. So, all right, that's it. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Catch you later.